Hey guys, did you miss me? I've only been gone a couple of days. Um, we're transitioning to our fall schedule, so there won't be any more Tuesday videos because Tomato Tuesday, our last one was last week. And then, so we're gonna stick to Saturdays and Sundays and sometimes Fridays. And I also took some extra time off to celebrate my birthday. In fact, I'm wearing a gift that Noah got me to remind you guys to subscribe and to like the video. <laughs> So we've had some pest and disease videos throughout the last couple of years. And I really only have two go-to pesticides that um, are organic and they are my go-tos. And I've mentioned them a million times. I've gotten a lot of questions though over the last couple of years about how to apply because there's different strengths apparently and all kinds of different choices with the two that I recommend. So I will just letting you know in advance, down below in the video description, I will have links to the brands that I use so that we're all on the same page and we're talking about the same application. So today's video is not going to be a pest and disease video. We've done lots of those. I will link them down in the video description. But like I said, there are two products I use all the time for almost any situation. Now there are, you know, first line of defense, which means the least I have to spray the better and i go over those in those pests and disease videos a lot of you know hand picking pests off like caterpillars spraying uh, aphids off so there are ways to do it before you move into the pesticides even though they're organic it's just better to go with the least invasive route possible first now it's also worth mentioning that pests and diseases will more often than not attack an unhealthy plant versus a healthy plant. So it's important to keep your plants watered well, fertilized well, and pick up the debris around them. And that's gonna keep a nice clean space uh, and some healthy plants so that pests and diseases will go to your neighbor's house. Another thing we wanna talk about is when to apply. And I'm talking about all types of pesticides here. Um, pesticides are not necessarily uh, they don't pick and choose what they're going to kill. There's not a certain organic pesticide that's best for one specific type of pest. And so sometimes bees and other pollinators, the beneficial insects, can be harmed by certain organic solutions. Now, if you spray them at the right time of day and you spray correctly, you can get around those things. So the first thing I wanna talk with you about is BT. And I don't have a bottle here. I was hoping it would arrive today. It's probably gonna to arrive tonight or right when I'm done with this video. Neem oil is number one across the board, my favorite organic pesticide. And it takes care of all types of things. It takes care of pests like aphids, spider mite, and whitefly. It takes care of diseases like rust, or a powdery mildew, it's great for all those things. So it's a really broad spectrum type of organic pesticide. Now with all pesticides, you want to spray them uh, early in the morning, really early in the morning. We're talking like right as you see the sunlight come over the horizon, right? Or late, like at dusk. And that is because we wanna stay away from harming the pollinators. And the pollinators in this case, let's talk about bees for instance. Now I have been assured by a couple of beekeepers that um, neem oil will not harm bees unless sprayed directly on the bee. Neem oil is to kill biting and chewing insects and bees don't do that. So as long as you're not spraying directly on the bee, things should be fine. But just to avoid it altogether, um, let's, let's say, you know, early morning or dusk after the bees have gone home for the day. And dusk is a great time as well because it's, it's right after the bees leave, but right before the moths show up. You know, moths are pollinators too, and they come out at night and we don't want to harm them. Now, as far as spraying with neem oil and mixing it up, you want to go with the package directions because there are different concentrates of neem oil. Now there are a couple of ways to apply any pesticide. You can buy them ready mixed. So it's like a squirt bottle that's already mixed. You just take it outside and start going. If you have any size garden that's bigger than maybe a couple of raised beds, that's gonna get really hard on the hand. And so then you can buy concentrate and mix it in some kind of a sprayer. Uh, this is actually a sprayer I got on Amazon. I'll link it down below. It's been, I've had it for well, this year, about a year. 
um, and it's working really well so far and it was very affordable. And so with that, you're going to mix up concentrates. And a lot of you wrote in saying, you know, how do I mix the neem oil? I don't know what brand you have. So always read the instructions on the bottle. If you get the brand I recommend down on in the, in the link below, it's going to be right on there. Now I was told that there are a few bottles that don't have the mixing instructions. Well, I don't know about those brands. So I use Neem Bliss. Uh, it's OMRI certified, so it's organic. And so if you can get that, definitely get that. But if not, make sure your package has mixing instructions and follow them. Now with neem oil, there are pests that are under the leaves most of the time and not just on the leaves. In fact, most pests are gonna be under the leaves. So it's always important that you take your sprayer. Now, the one thing I don't like about this sprayer, it's the only thing that I found, is it doesn't have a bend in the tip. Most sprayers have a little bend. And so you can get up under the leaves a little bit easier, but just you know, get a little lower angle and just make sure you're getting under those leaves because that's where most of them are hiding, like spider mites especially. Now for things like spider mites, uh, you want to spray every week. Every week, because there are cycles. They have the actual spider mite and then they have the eggs. So you might spray one week and then all of a sudden, hey, it disappeared. And then all of a sudden it'll come back. That's because you didn't get the eggs. So spray under the leaves, spray the ground as well under the plant because sometimes the eggs can be down there. Spray that as well. Um, white fly, usually under the leaves, you're gonna see the little webbing, the little uh, fingerprint looking beginning of a white fly problem. But with neem oil, it's important to go on a regimen of at least every two weeks to just kind of spray um, if you have pests that you see in your garden. Now, I know in Canada and maybe in Europe, neem oil isn't available. Um, in that case, you know, use an insecticidal soap. You can actually make your own. I have a recipe here. It's two cups of like cooking oil, a cup of dishwashing liquid, and mix that up in a container and you can keep it. And you wanna put about two to three tablespoons per gallon of water and spray that. And that kind of as a kill on contact, it doesn't last a long time, but it can be effective if you keep up with it. But if you can get neem oil, that's my first choice. So now I wanna talk about the second pesticide that I love, and that is BT. And I use Monterey brand, it's OMRI uh, listed as well. And that is for any type of caterpillar worm type pest. So army worms, uh, tomato horn worms, the green cabbage loopers, all of those. And this stuff is like magic. It takes care of them almost immediately. Uh, I don't know if it was a coincidence. One time I was spraying a bunch of caterpillars and they literally just started flopping off the, the plant onto the ground. So it is really the only thing I use um, if I have an infestation of some type of caterpillar uh, pest. Again, mix according to the label. You can also get BT um, spray already made, already mixed up. But like I said, unless you have a really small garden, maybe a few containers. Now, another great thing about buying concentrate and mixing it yourself in a sprayer like this is you can also foliar feed at the same time. So you could mix in, you know, um, a couple of tablespoons of the Neptune's Harvest fish and seaweed or the tomato and veg formula right in there. So you're getting double duty and fighting pests and disease and feeding the plant at the same time. So if you do mix uh, fertilizers in with the uh, pesticide, you want to use it all up, or if you don't use it all, toss the rest, don't keep it. Now you can, if you have, let's say a caterpillar issue and a uh, white fly issue, you can use Monterey, uh, you can use BT and neem oil in the same sprayer together. When you mix products, use them right away and throw away any that's left over. If you're using one product alone, like just neem oil, just BT, you can store that for, I wouldn't store it for more than a week before you spray the next time. Uh, after that, it's gonna probably lose some of its potency, especially the BT, because that's a bacteria. I don't worry too much about a few holes in my leaves from caterpillars or a Japanese beetle or you know, a few stems of my green beans covered in aphids. 
as long as it doesn't get worse than that. But when you do see those signs, it's a good idea to keep your eye open for a bigger infestation within the coming weeks. I hope this answered your questions. And like I said before, if you have a question on kind of a broader spectrum of everything that you want to know about pests and disease, I do have some videos on that that will be linked down below. I'll see you guys next time.